A woman returns to her childhood home along with her super annoying stepdaughters and idiot rock star husband to discover that the imaginary friend she left behind is ready to bore the crap out of us, the audience, for almost two god-awful hours in a Bloomhouse production ironically called Imaginary. Directed and written by the underwhelming Jeff Wadlow, he being the mastermind behind such inept efforts as Fantasy Island, Truth or Dare, and Kick-Ass 2, is a painfully pedestrian slog filled with piss-poor acting, cliched horror tropes, excruciatingly wooden dialogue, and a structureless, vaporous narrative that feels like it was hashed out last minute by a committee of failed film school dorks high on Tester's airplane glue and the reek of their own rotten egg farts. Ay ay ay. It's like the dolts at Bloomhouse decided the world needed to see yet another idiotic doll, or in this case, teddy bear gone evil fleck. Having milked the shit out of the Insidious, Halloween, and Paranormal Activity franchises, well, what other cinematic pablum dumps can Jason Bloom and his team of up-and-coming hacks crap out onto the universe? You know how you rub your hands together in anticipation of another A24 horror film, folks? Well, you should use those same hands to turn the channel if you ever see Bloomhouse Productions at the start of a film. I can just see the early production meetings. Now, let's just keep to the game plan, everyone. Now, we don't want to see anything original here. Keep it planned, for God's sakes. Find me some mediocre acting talent and we'll give them lots and lots of awkward exposition to vomit all over the audience. Then, well then we'll film Chauncey the teddy bear in a way that never looks scary, throw in some cheap jump scares that will provide neither a jump nor a scare, and then we should be good for bilking lots and lots of suckers out of their hard-earned cash. Folks, if you're not sure if a movie is going to be good or not, first thing you need to check are the writing credits. The more writers involved, the worse and more muddled the film will certainly be guaranteed. Imaginary has three. The director himself, who's penned some god-awful films, and two other dudes named Greg Erb and Jason Ormeland, who both have suspiciously similar and unimpressive writing credits. Well, not since the Jonas Brothers have we seen such an unimpressive trio. Look, when you get Grillman from Lou's Burger Shack to cater your wedding, don't be surprised when the filet mignons taste like urinal pucks. The film stars DeWanda Wise as Jessica, a children's book author who is just barely passable here. But then, with such god-awful dialogue to chew through, I suppose you couldn't expect much else. Now, Tom Payne plays her limey rock star husband, giving the kind of bland performance one would expect to see in an episode of As the Stomach Turns. Around the 30-minute mark, the writers have him fuck off on some cross-country music tour, probably because they had absolutely zero idea how to use him in the rest of the story. Oh, and on the subject of the husband, why on earth does he go to bed with his wife wearing street clothes? I mean, he wakes up next to her in the morning wearing what looks like a Henley long sleeve shirt. Does he have jeans and cowboy boots under the covers as well? <laughs> God, even the wardrobe crew seems to be smoking crack on this production. Tegan Burns gives a pedestrian cardboard cutout performance as the eldest sister, who simply comes off as a teen bully and whiny asshole throughout. And Piper Braun plays little sister Alice, who makes a connection with found teddy bear and Jessica's childhood imaginary friend Chauncey. Now her performance is about what you'd expect from a kid her age. Awful. You can almost see the director in the reflection of her eyes, carefully guiding her through a rather stilted performance. 
The irrelevant Betty Buckley plays the part of Gloria, the creepy old lady who lives next door. Now she just drops in here and there for the sole purpose of barfing out reams of garbled exposition that comes across about as naturally as Freddie Lowndes' oration of the Tooth Fairy's manifesto. With wonder and awe, the strength of the red dragon, all I wrote about him were lies. Will grant me. Anyway, trying to stay away from any spoilers as if a black rotten banana could be any more spoiled. The story is a muddled mess of half-baked ideas and uninspired lethargic plot advancements that feel about as authentic as a Justin Trudeau election promise. For some bizarre reason that never seems to be real clear, the husband convinces the wife to move back into her childhood home because she's having nightmares in their current home. The one and same home where her father lost his marbles and abused her. Wow, great idea, Sigmund Freud. Now, with husbands like this, well, who needs enemies? This all leads to a barely fleshed out subplot that has laughable scenes of Jessica visiting her nutty, gargantuan dad in the hospital. What's clearly supposed to be the film's tear jerker moment made me laugh out loud in the theater. I mean, Jonas Priest, what warmed over maudlin dick syrup are you attempting to slather over the audience? The story then slams the brakes and U-turns from what appears to be a more cuddly version of a Chucky into a low-rent poltergeist film. And I can tell you, by that point, I've already checked out, folks. <sighs> A magical trap door in the cellar leads to a place that resembles Marv's laser tag just a few minutes down Highway 7 past the beef and booze. And in here we find what is supposed to be the bigger, nastier manifestation of Chauncey the Bear that looks about as threatening as Mr. Snuffleupagus when he gets the runs. <laughs> My God, who, ha, how does this garbage even get greenlit? Imaginary can currently be avoided at all costs in theaters and gets an acid test rating of utter shit. That is all.